anyway, uh, Ben & Jerry was the successful company and uh, uh, were poster childs. I mean, I remember uh, they ran a competition to try to find a CEO, but the problem was that they wouldn't pay the CEO enough because they had this ratio between the lowest paid employee and the CEO. So they couldn't find a CEO. And then they landed up hiring somebody, and this guy was, uh, had formerly worked in a gun manufacturer, and um, people freaked out. Uh, the customers, the hippie customers freaked out when they heard about this, and uh, they forced him to resign. There were demonstrations, literally demonstrations in San Francisco over the choice of CEO um, that Ben & Jerry um, had picked. So um, uh, Ben & Jerry has always been the symbol of you know, of leftism and uh, of corporate social responsibility and of, you know, the, the, this kind of, uh, this kind of attitude and the, the, this kind of gig. Um, I stopped buying Ben & Jerry sometime in the 90s, well over 20 years ago. I've, I've not had a Ben & Jerry since then uh, because I did not want to support them because I thought that they were harmful to the country. They were destroying um, they were actively advocating against capitalism. They were actively uh, distorting the record of capitalism and, and promoting what I thought was, was anti-capitalist ideas. And uh, every dollar that they got, every, every, out of every ice cream that you buy there, a certain percentage of the money goes to this kind of uh, uh, activism. Anyway, um, Ben & Jerry sold themselves in April 2000 to Unilever, the, uh, a British conglomerate, big company, massive uh, food giant. Um, and what's interesting is that Unilever, when they bought Ben & Jerry, and I think the reason Ben & Jerry were willing to sell to Unilever, is that Unilever committed to carry out the company's tradition of engaging in these kind of socially responsible um, ideas. And they actually created a board at Ben & Jerry and this, I don't know of any other company in the world that has this, a board, an independent board, separate from the board of Unilever, just to oversee Ben & Jerry. And that board was given kind of authority over the whole uh, social responsibility uh, issues involved. Unilever believed that a big part of the selling point of Ben & Jerry was its political and social activism. And therefore, uh, they encouraged that and they supported that and they uh, that that, you know, they continued that as, as the Ben & Jerry brand under this Unilever brand. Unilever, by the time they bought Ben & Jerry, was already the largest seller of ice cream in the world. But they didn't have a high-quality ice cream. Ben & Jerry was the first kind of high-quality ice cream uh, uh, that they could get. Um, anyway, uh, so since then, Ben & Jerry have continued, in spite of having this corporate overload. And by the way, when they sold to Unilever, there were demonstrations in the streets of San Francisco again. That is, the, the, the left hated the idea that Ben & Jerry would sell out. And Ben & Jerry made, uh, they sold the company for $360 million. Most of that was theirs. So they became centi-millionaires, um, the, these two hippies. And, um, <laughs> and they... Um, they both, uh, they both stayed involved with the company. They both stayed uh, connected to it. Um, the board uh, has uh, been run by a, uh, particularly in the last few years, by a, a woman who is well known uh, as, as a social activist, as a committed leftist, and, 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 and super involved in, in um, social causes and, and left-wing agenda and the whole, the whole woke thing. Anyway, um, where is this thing? I had, I had this uh, interesting article about this. Anyway, uh, all was chugging along nicely. Ben & Jerry never made a huge amount of money for Unilever, but Unilever was committed to social responsibility. It had a CEO who committed himself to social responsibility. In spite of that, the stock did well for a while. Uh, more recently, uh, they replaced the CEO. This CEO was even more committed to social responsibility and yet now the stock was not doing as well as before. Now, one of the things, one of the, I think the first expansion of Ben & Jerry overseas was uh, in, um, in um, 
what do you call it, in uh, 2000, no, it wasn't 2004. Um, when did this happen? Yeah, anyway, they, they basically, uh, the first expansion was an expansion into Israel. Um, and uh, there was an entrepreneur, an Israeli entrepreneur, who had lived in the United States, who had liked Ben and Jerry, who'd liked the ice cream, thought the concept would work really well in Israel, and he brought the ice cream to Israel. And it's been a huge success, and Ben and Jerry has made a lot of money uh, off of uh, the ice cream in Israel. The, the, uh, the Israeli entrepreneur, uh, you know, got the list of all the recipes. He then uh, got all the uh, suppliers. He got the original ingredients. Um, uh, well, not original ingredients. A lot of the ingredients are Israeli he made. Anyway, he grew it in Israel, and it's, it's been very successful in Israel, including, it turns out, in the West Bank, including among Arabs in the West Bank. Now, this has become a real problem for Ben and Jerry, right? Because on the one hand, they are committed to leftist causes. And one of the most popular leftist causes these days is divestment from Israel because Israel is, quote, an apartheid state. And Israel is an evil state. It's an oppressor of the Palestinians. And uh, it, it is wrong, uh, according to the left, to have anything to do with Israel. And it's certainly wrong to have anything to do with uh, the West Bank, with that area which is uh, where the Palestinians live, which is not technically a part of Israel. Israel has never annexed it. Uh, and uh, there's a huge movement in the United States to divest from Israel, to not have anything to do with Israel. And in, uh, in 2016, a, a local uh, a Palestinian who'd moved to the United States and who lived in Burlington, Vermont, where Ben and Jerry um, uh, had lived. Anyway, he approached, uh, I think it was Ben, and said, hey, Ben, they were working out at the gym together, why are you selling ice cream in the West Bank? Uh, this is an evil, the, the Israelis are evil, the whole thing is evil, you need to stop doing this. Um, ben took this seriously because he's a good He's a good uh, uh, leftist, and he went to the board of Ben and Jerry, which has independence, and uh, they started debating this. And in, in early on, what they tried to do was they started buying products from Palestinian farmers. They bought almonds from Palestinian farmers. They tried to um, actually have the stores in the West Bank and even in Gaza run by local Palestinians. They got, you know, so, so they were making money and then they started buying milk and they started buying other products from Palestinians. But none of this satisfied the American left, the, 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 and, and particularly after Black Lives Matter when the left became more engaged and as Ben and Jerry fully supported Black Lives Matter and went completely behind them. Um, there was a big demonstration, for example, in May 2021, a year after Black Lives Matter in downtown Burlington, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, against Israel. And the demonstration was focused on the Ben & Jerry store at the place and yelling at them and, uh, you know, arguing that Ben & Jerry should have no business there. And indeed, you know, what happened was the board realized that all this attempt to appease uh, had not worked, but more than that, they realized that they were not acting based on their announced principles. So that in July 2021, Ben and Jerry announced that they would um, that they would cease, they would um, uh, not renew the contract with the Israeli entrepreneur, that they would cease selling all Ben & Jerry products in what's called the Occupied Territories in, in the West Bank and, and, and even in, and in Gaza, and that they would find a new licensee who would only sell the ice cream in Israel proper, in what they consider Israel proper. Uh, this, of course, created a huge uproar within supporters of Israel in the United States. Israel itself, um, uh, you know, there, there, there were was very unhappy with this. It created a little bit of a diplomatic uh, crisis. Uh, you know, the, the, the Israeli ambassador talked to, talked to the Unilever CEO, uh, put a lot of pressure on Unilever. And indeed, uh, this is all at a time when the Unilever CEO is relatively new and he's com even more committed to social justice 
and yet the stock price is coming down and there's activists buying into the Unilever board and they're trying to shift. So Unilever then tells, you know, so there's all this uproar and there's all this agitation. And then in Israel, Israelis start boycotting Ben & Jerry. So the business of Ben & Jerry collapses. So then the entrepreneur had the rights to sell Ben & Jerry in Israel, sues Unilever. So then Unilever, in this amazing kind of, uh, uh, Unilever basically says, okay, we reject what Ben & Jerry did. We are going to sell Ben & Jerry to the Israeli entrepreneur. We're going to let him run the whole thing. The only thing he's not allowed to do, he can use the logo, he can use the background with the cows and the, and the, uh, what do you call it, the clouds and all that crap. The only thing he can't do is have Ben and Jerry's in, in English. He can have it in Hebrew. He can have it in, in Arabic. He can't have it in English. And he can do what he wants with it, whatever he wants with it. And Unilever basically caved. And the Ben and Jerry board said, wait a minute, we've got a deal. And, and you had committed at the time of the purchase to giving us independence and giving us the authority to make these kind of decisions. And Unilever said, well, not when it comes, not, not an important decisions, and this is creating an international conflict, and this is creating huge losses, and this is going nowhere, and there are lawsuits and everything. No, we're overriding you. So the Ben & Jerry board sued the Unilever board, which, again, is unprecedented. They all filed in courts, and they, they did all this stuff, and the thing was in front of a judge. And I think what was happening was it got very, very close to the point where Unilever was basically going to say, and remember, this board that Ben & Jerry has is, is the two members from the Unilever board, the CEO and one of the member, but everybody else, I think there are nine members, everybody else is basically a leftist, uh, committed social justice warrior, right? And Unilever was basically, even though they were committed to social justice, bottom line, shareholder and uh, activists were starting to put pressure on Unilever. Ultimately, the CEO has been fired. He's going to be replaced in July. But um, Unilever, I think, told Ben & Jerry, look, if you insist on this, we're basically going to do away with this whole board concept. We're basically going to get rid of the board. So what happened was Ben and & Jerry and Unilever settled. Um, it's not clear exactly what they settled, but the lawsuits were dismissed. Um, the Israeli entrepreneur has has the franchise, and since December 15, 2022, um, Ben & Jerry is functioning in Israel, functioning in all of Israel, everywhere. It's selling ice cream. It's owned outright by the Israeli entrepreneur. Unilever wash their hands of Israel on the one hand, of this part of Israel, just ice cream. They sell other stuff in Israel. But they've also kind of put the Ben & Jerry board in its place. Now, why do I tell you this story? Because I want to tell you this story because uh, it's another illustration, as if we need more, but it's another illustration of the principle that the moral is the practical and the practical is the moral. And that when you do really, really dumb things, when you do things that don't make sense, when you do things um, like so-called social corporate responsibility, when you real function and you real... Uh, everything is, is, is dedicated to, uh, is built around the principle of making money, of, of profit, and, and, and uh, maximizing shareholder wealth. You can for a while get around it. And, and obviously Ben and Jerry themselves did. I mean, they, they prospered financially while running a, a socially responsible place because they, they catered to a particular crowd and a particular audience. But even they struggled to find a CEO. Even they had relatively low profit margins for, for, for a high-quality ice cream place. In spite of the fact that the ice cream was expensive, profit margins were very low. And then once Unilever bought them, and once Unilever, which is a, a corporation listed and, and uh, has multiple shareholders, even in a system that's semi-free like our system, you can't get away with just ignoring your shareholders, you can't get away with just ignoring uh, the marketplace. I, I think BlackRock these days is discovering that as funds are being pulled from Rack, BlackRock because BlackRock is more committed to ESG than they are to maximizing their investors' money, their investors' wealth. 
And as a consequence, people are pulling out a black block. Well, the same thing is happening in Unilever. Their commitment to social responsibility is ultimately undermined. Their ability to, to, to be successful as a business, and as a consequence of that, they are losing that business. And uh, uh, Ben and Jerry will not be able to function. You know, they'll, they'll be allowed to do their so social responsibility up to a point, as long as it's deemed as, let's be you know, real here, as long as it's deemed to be smart marketing, as long as it's de deemed to be satisfying their basic customers, many of whom I think have now moved on to all kinds of other speciality ice cream. There's so much speciality ice cream today. I'm not sure that the buyers of Ben & Jerry anymore are uh, attuned to its social responsibility message anymore. I think, I think those people have moved on to something else. Um, so, Ben and Jerry are, um, you know, another illustration of the ultimate failure of the attempt to try to bring about, uh, you know, social responsibility in the context of a business that has shareholders and is committed to legally to have fiduciary responsibility to them. Uh, to try to have it both ways, to try to try to somehow figure this out, to say, somehow uh, uh, balance all these quotas. It also shows how decision making, you know, stupid decision making, you know, uh, uh, not selling in the West Bank is not achieving anything. It's it's denying Palestinians of a delicious ice cream, uh, and it's denying Palestinians of you know a market for their milk and a market for their almonds and a market for other products that Ben and Jerry was buying in Israel. And uh, so you can see, you can see that inconsistency ultimately results in bad performance. Unilever is suffering; it's replacing its CEO. The new CEO coming in is a lot less committed to social responsibility, a lot less committed. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show. We make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.